opening okay. up the conversation. We do a lot of American things, but it just optically looks different to people. What's going on, everybody? David and Andrew from the Fun Bros here. Hope what you guys up? are maintaining some social distance. Andrew, so much in the news is happening every day. Week three of quarantine. But we got some good news, bad news, complicated news. But first, the good news. The good news is we're setting up another Hype to Help online store and donating a total of $2,000 amongst four different charities. Round one, we donated $3,500 to get more PPE for healthcare workers and meals for children of low-income families. Round two looks like this. $500 is going to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, America's top legal firm for fighting racial injustice. $500 will be going to the Latino Immigrant Families Together Fund, giving assistance to minors and children suffering the trauma of family separation. $500 will be going to the Children of Fallen Patriots, supporting children of military personnel that lost their life in the line of duty. And $500 will be going to the Arab American Institute. It encourages civic participation and fights xenophobia against anti-Arab bigotry. Basically, guys, here's how the video is structured. First section, we have our comments on your comment. Comments from our previous video, we got 1,500 of them. These are not just any regular comments. A lot of great racial discussions popped up, not just involving Asians, but actually involving other minorities. Number two, we will be giving our opinions on the Andrew Yang Washington Post op-ed that, you know, was very controversial. Okay, so the number one comment that we got was, hey guys, I don't think Asians helped out my group when we were going through our racial struggle, so why should we help you now? We don't want to. We don't, we're not against you, but we're definitely not gonna defend you. You're on your own. Ah, Basically, that's... that was a comment, they got worded in multiple ways. Yeah, I think this one, I do understand what they're trying to say that Asians as a whole in the masses did not come out for other movements. And there were definitely Asian individuals that did, but no, as far as like the overall Asian American leadership, they did not really back those movements. What are some of the reasons why Asians kinda didn't step up for other minorities? We don't even have any organization to say whether or not we should support somebody or not. It was almost like not even a discussion. You could argue that we don't even have a real community. I'm just bringing up a structural yeah fact and also to be honest Asians are just not that political period so they don't even come out for even other Asian causes oftentimes Asians actually have the lowest voting rate out of any group in America and I get what people are saying you know people say oh you guys try to play both sides you guys try to stay neutral stay neutral these are actually larger sort of like sociological questions a lot of Asian philosophy that's based in the East a lot of it is like hey the nail that sticks up will get hammered okay literally and that's a very different than the West where it's like the squeaky wheel gets the grease the next point was that Asians build small businesses in other minorities neighborhoods but make people feel unwelcome or don't give back I can't speak on the problem as much as what I believe would be a solution and when I say solution Andrew I'm not talking about arriving at complete alignment I'm just no. talking about getting to a point where there's mutual respect. I, I believe the first step though is empathy and understanding each other's situation. Right. We should create more art together. For yeah. example, it's Crash, Do the Right Thing. Justin Chan made this movie, Gook, that was speaking about the LA riots in 92, trying to show both sides, you know what I mean? We just need more art that's collaborative. Nobody's ever necessarily gonna see things exactly the way the other person is, but they just have to reach some point of mutual respect and mutual understanding. And you know what's an issue about the internet I was just thinking about is that a lot of people, they build their feelings based off of the internet. And I do think it's okay to let your feelings out on the internet. I mean, to be honest, that's a safer place than letting your feelings out in person. But it's when people from different communities are commenting on each other and they have no actual real interaction with each other. So then they're just seeing what they see on the media and what's being shared, all the negative stuff. And you know, negative stuff, it gets shared easier. People love sharing. It, it, it always goes by It sort of more. like scratches the immediate sensations of human nature yeah. more than positive it, stuff. it wants you to get riled up. That's why I think John Krasinski started that Good News Only YouTube channel. I, I will say this, I don't think that Positively Only, that's why this video is, is addressing, I guess, some of the more complicated or semi-negative things. Third most common comment we got was, hey guys, I was wondering when you guys were gonna get it. Welcome to the club. <laughs> it was a little bit more of a matter of fact feeling. Yeah. Well, what's interesting about this comment is that it revealed that there are internal conversations in those communities 
about whether Asians are true minorities or not. Whether they've been through enough struggle or a similar struggle as them to be accepted into the club. I, I don't even know if there really is a right answer, but I definitely know that for some people, the way they're defining being a person of color is like your relationship with the larger machine. There is some discussion about whether or not Asians, like do they just buy so much into the machine, whatever the machine is, the systems that are, the powers that be, that we are like not really people of color in the struggle against the machine. And by the way, Asians, that is a huge umbrella term, by the way. We understand that there are many, many different types of Asians. I'll tell you this, guys. Obviously, like I said, me and Andrew do not have the answers. It, these are complicated These are super man. complicated. They're so multi-layered. We're not gonna what? solve them in our car. And not only that, <laughs> Andrew, we don't actually control anybody nah, other think. than ourselves. But I will say this, based off these comments, I do want to dedicate a portion of the channel moving forward to addressing these topics, for sure. The fourth comment that we received was from people saying, hey man, our group had to go through something similar like this. So, you know, I have a lot of empathy for you guys. I don't think it's as bad as what you guys are about to go through. I believe from more Arab or Indian Americans, Muslims, that were basically like, yo man, our group had to go through a lot of discrimination and stereotypes after 9-11. This is, here's, here's just some of my recommendations to you. Every Asian's gonna be aware that there is discrimination happening against Asians, but depending on where you're at in the country and you know, your socioeconomic your, level or your whatever, lifestyle, who your you lifestyle and who you come across and the people you keep around you, you may not feel it yourself. The next popular comment was, well, you know, I don't really see you guys, you know, be too ultra patriotic in my eyes. So I just want to know where Asians stand on patriotism. First of all, there is kind of this thought that Asians don't make up a significant amount of the military, but if you look at it, 6% of the military is Asian American. Guess what the Asian population of America is? 6%. So literally Asians, it is proportional with the population in America. So that means we're not really underrepresented in the military. Right. Not to say that the military is the only way you could serve. You know, 17% of doctors are Asian. Yeah. And Asians only make up 6% of the American population. That means we're... 300% like a lot of Asians try to be doctors. What percentage are nurses and what percentage are pharmacists? All these people who are so crucial to the infrastructure and to fighting the virus right now, you know? They call them frontliners because they are on the front lines yeah. of this war against the virus. We of course have people like Johnny Kim, Navy SEAL, astronaut, but then there's people that are almost just like Ming Lin. He's the doctor who put his whole career on the line to make sure his whole team in Washington state have PPE and N95 masks. Look, Asians make up so much of the workforce and and you know, law abiding citizens and stuff. It's just like, man, we are serving the country. Don't think that we need to prove ourselves any extra than anybody else. A lot of Asians, we run service based industries. We provide a service, we cut your hair, we do your nails. We are providing a service. We code your website. Yeah. And guess what? Asians are very much part of business. We are very much entrepreneurs. So I think that we do a lot of American things, but it just optically looks different to people. You know, we open up businesses, but instead of selling like serving burgers, we sell noodles and then everybody's like, oh, that's weird. That's not American. I'm like, what are you talking about? We're part of like American structure. So, you know, here's an anecdote. You know that one movie, Lone Survivor with Mark Wahlberg? where all the Navy SEALs die except one. That's based on a true story. And actually of that Navy SEAL team, there's actually an Asian guy. There was a Korean American on that squad, but he's not in the movie. Yeah, so it goes to show you there we, was. Were, we were getting washed out. Yeah, because it probably wouldn't play well to like a certain crowd if they showed that. Here, honest. let me make it easy. Just throw Daniel Day Kim in the movie for like 10 minutes, why not? Point number five, Andrew, there was some people supporting us saying, you know what, I'm gonna break the cycle of hate with me. I don't wanna be participating in anything. I'm making sure I'm striking down any sort of ignorance at any point that I can. There was a lot of support as well, you know, people who was like, yo, I'm, I'm with you guys in the allyship, gonna stand up for injustices everywhere to any people. I can try to empathize and understand, you know, the more critical comments about our community, but it was good to hear the positive come out. You're talking about from Cardi B. Let's stop being xenophobic. Let's stop having crazy anger because I've been seeing a lot of Asians get beat up. From The Rock. By the way, it doesn't matter to me where it came from. It's not a China virus. It's not a Chinese virus. It's a human global virus that we're all dealing with. Bernice King, Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter. Opening uh, uh, up the conversation. Now to go on to the second section of this video. Andrew Yang, former presidential candidate. Yep. 
had a very, very controversial opinion piece op-ed in the Washington Post. Woo! First of all, I think Andrew Yang stepped out of his lane. He didn't make his campaign about racial identity or, or identity politics. That's not his lane. He, second of all, it was not fully inspiring. I, I thought the examples he used and the wording was poor, and I don't think he put enough thought into this. Third, I would say hopefully he learned from this, and I personally, I think he, he can come back and do something better and gain perspective and learn from this as well. There was a feeling in Asian America that it's like, yo, we didn't do anything. And all of a sudden on the internet, in person, you know, everything from a tiny microaggression all the way to something more intense. It seems like there's just this whole wave of anti-Asian discrimination that obviously even the FBI predicted. And what are you gonna tell us? And obviously Andrew Yang being the biggest Asian American presidential candidate in, in history, the most famous politician in history. What are you gonna tell us? And he told us essentially that racism was human nature and that to combat the human nature, we needed to throw on more visual American elements. Right, such as wear red, white, and blue, be more involved civically, go the extra mile just to show people that we're American. The core of Asian America is incredibly American. We come to this country and we contribute. However, I will say that anecdotally on the outside, we don't wear a lot of college gear. You don't see us wear cowboy hats. You don't see us like at the rodeo. That's just not our culture. By the way, I get what he's saying. Gimmick packaging works but it's also crazy to suggest that people need to change their life to fit the image packaging dude i think just because some people don't think that we pass the eye test for an american that we have to go the extra mile and cater to them all right so i think that there was a misalignment with who it felt like that piece was meant for and who it was delivered to. That's why so many people are upset at him right now. I would say, Andrew, that as far as being American goes, Asians range everywhere from being like a Chris Middleton to a Paul Pierce. Now, if you know about Paul Pierce, Paul Pierce is one of the greatest NBA players of all time. But Andrew, anecdotally, a lot of people don't put him up there. You know why? Because his game doesn't fully pass the eye test. And Chris Middleton, by all means, is an incredibly efficient contributing player. He's gonna be one of the main reasons if the Bucks ever win the championship with Giannis. But a lot of times, Chris Middleton doesn't get the credit either because his game is not that flashy. It's just incredibly efficient. He just delivers. He adds a lot of value to the team. Nobody ever says, Pierce, the truth, when they're like fading away. But his percentages are up there with like anybody. Community. Or he could have wrote two pieces. He could have wrote one directly to the Asian American community on a publication like Next Shark, sort of addressing the harsh reality of like the gimmicks, which is like wearing college sweatshirts and things like that. And then number two, he could have wrote something in the Washington Post that was more encouraging people to like reach out to their Asian neighbor and stop being racist towards people who really have absolutely nothing to do with the coronavirus. And if anything, are just helping to fight it. Overall, we understand where Andrew Yang is coming from. He's a logical guy and it made some sense, but the tone and timing was way off. We should all do more, do as much as we can to help, but not because it'll make ignorant people feel comfortable around us, but because it's the right thing to do. So wrapping this up, we said we we're gonna explain why we're giving back to these particular charities. Our first Hype to Help store that gave away $3,500, all that money was actually directed towards things that were fighting the consequences of the coronavirus. Right, that was the first Hype to Help. Yeah. I just want to show people that I hear them out and I can't solve anything. Listen guys, nobody can control what they're born as or how they live or how their culture is or how like, you know, whatever tribe we're born into, every tribe has a different culture. First of all, at the base of human nature, everybody just wants to live a good life. Everybody wants to make sure their family's happy. Everybody wants to make sure their family's safe. But yes, people do have different cultures layered on top of that. They eat different things. They talk different. Um, they express, you know, some are more expressive, some are less expressive. But I'm just saying that, listen guys, I can't change any of that. You know what I mean? The, the positioning that people are born into. But what I can show you is that I hear what you guys are saying, I can acknowledge it, and I can have respect for it. If there was ever a time to go help other people out, now is a great time to do it, okay? There's no question, there's people in need. Everybody's in need right now. So, help somebody out. For sure, and you know, I'm gonna take any discussions moving forward, and I hope that people take our discussions into consideration moving forward as well. Aren't right, you guys, number one, make sure you let us know 
what you thought of our comments on your comments. And number two, guys, just make sure you let us know one thing that you are doing that's good in this moment that can have a positive impact on greater society. Until next time, you guys, we're the Fun Bros. We out. Peace. Peace.